Nvidia shares crashed by almost 7% in a single trading session, wiping out over $100 billion in market value after reports emerged that Meta was negotiating to purchase AI chips from Google rather than continuing their exclusive reliance on NVIDIA's dominance, and this represents far more than just one company losing a deal because what's actually happening is the potential unraveling of a trillion-dollar monopoly that has become so central to the global economy that analysts openly admitted the entire world would have collapsed if NVIDIA had missed earnings expectations last quarter. But here's what makes the situation genuinely explosive. Google's TPUS, which are tensor processing units that they've been developing for over a decade, were used to train Gemini 3 entirely in-house, and that model outperformed most other AI systems on industry benchmarks, which naturally made tech firms curious enough that Anthropic already signed a deal worth tens of billions of dollars to purchase around 1 million TPUS. And now, Meta appears ready to follow. Once you understand why Google's chips cost just 10-50% to 50 of what NVIDIA's GPUs cost, which means a GPU that sells for $40,000 could be replaced by a TPU costing between $4,000 and $20,000, why experts say these alternative chips offer 1.4 times better performance per dollar spent, and what NVIDIA really meant when they issued a statement saying they're delighted by Google's success, while simultaneously reminding investors that NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry. You'll realize we're watching the early stages of a massive market disruption, where even a modest shift away from NVIDIA's monopoly could trigger consequences far beyond the semiconductor industry, because the entire illusion of American economic growth depends on just seven technology companies, and if NVIDIA's dominance begins cracking, the ripple effects could expose how fragile this AI-driven boom actually is. NVIDIA has become synonymous with positive financial news. Either markets are climbing, investors are making fortunes, or tech giants are committing billions in new investments. That's been the typical NVIDIA story for the past several years, but things took a dramatically different turn recently. There's now serious discussion about a new, but actually quite old challenger emerging, someone who could potentially end NVIDIA's trillion-dollar monopoly in the AI chip market. We're talking about Google. On Monday evening, a major headline shook up the technology world. Reports indicated that Meta was actively looking to purchase chips from Google rather than continuing exclusive reliance on NVIDIA. They want to reduce their dependence on a single supplier, so Meta turned to Google for alternatives. No deal has been formally signed yet, but if confirmed, analysts suggest it could be worth billions of dollars. More importantly from a strategic perspective, it would significantly reduce NVIDIA's market dominance. The market reaction was immediate and severe. On Tuesday morning, NVIDIA stock was down by almost 7% at opening. It ended the trading day around 2.6% in negative territory. That represents more than $100 billion in market value completely wiped out in a single session. NVIDIA clearly decided they needed to respond to calm investor panic. They released an official statement attempting to control the narrative. The statement read, and this is a direct quote, We're delighted by Google's success. They've made great advances in AI and we continue to supply to Google. NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry. It's the only platform that runs every AI model and does it everywhere computing is done. So was that statement a genuine compliment or a subtle criticism? NVIDIA claims they're delighted by Google's success, but they also included a pointed reminder for investors that NVIDIA remains a generation ahead of all competitors. Most analysts would classify that as a defensive statement. This response was clearly designed to reassure investors and communicate that NVIDIA's market position remains secure. But the fundamental question remains, is their market dominance actually safe? Let's examine Google's chips more closely to understand the competitive threat. They're called TPUS, which stands for Tensor Processing Units. NVIDIA's chips are called GPUs, which stands for Graphic Processing Units. Google has been developing these TPU systems for more than a decade now. Until recently, they were used exclusively in-house, meaning Google deployed these chips solely to train their own AI models. One such model is Gemini 3. This Gemini 3 model was trained entirely on Google's proprietary chips, the TPUS, and the results were impressive. They outperformed most other AI models on industry benchmark tests. So naturally, technology firms became genuinely curious about this alternative. Last month, Anthropic signed a deal with Google to purchase approximately 1 million TPUS. It's a deal reportedly worth tens of billions of dollars. Then on Monday, news broke about Meta's negotiations with Google. There's clearly a pattern developing here. 
But will this pattern lead to something substantially bigger? Can Google's TPUS actually match up to NVIDIA's GPUS in terms of performance and market penetration? Consider the current market share distribution. NVIDIA's GPUs comprise approximately 90% of the entire AI chip market. That represents a near-total monopoly. And here's the critical factor about NVIDIA's chips. They're genuinely excellent products. Yes, they benefited from first-mover advantage in the AI boom, but NVIDIA has actually built upon that initial advantage with continuous innovation. So if you're a technology company, you need a genuinely compelling reason to abandon NVIDIA. You need very strong justification to purchase from someone else, especially when switching costs and integration challenges are significant. And Google isn't the only alternative supplier entering this market. Amazon has developed its own chip called the Tranium chip. OpenAI is actively collaborating with Broadcom to manufacture their own proprietary chip. So fairly soon, the market will have multiple options available. But as mentioned earlier, is there actually a compelling reason to purchase these alternatives? There are four critical factors worth examining. Number one, these non-NVIDIA chips are substantially cheaper, and cheaper chips translate directly to cheaper AI model training and operation. Google's TPUs cost just 10 to 50% of what NVIDIA's GPU costs. So if a GPU is priced at $40,000, then a comparable TPU could cost anywhere from $4,000 to $20,000. The price differential is enormous. That's factor number one. NVIDIA is dramatically more expensive than alternatives. Factor number two, non-NVIDIA chips offer better performance metrics per dollar spent. Industry experts suggest approximately 1.4 times more computational performance per dollar. That represents both time saved and money saved on operational costs. Factor number three introduces complexity. NVIDIA's chips are substantially more versatile. Experts describe GPUs as functioning like a Swiss army knife. They can handle multiple different computational tasks simultaneously. But these other chips from Google, Amazon, and others are custom built. They're engineered specifically to train or operate AI models. And that specialization is precisely why they're cheaper. These chips are essentially optimized for single purposes rather than general computing. Which brings us to the fourth and final factor, NVIDIA's established ecosystem. The company has developed software called CUDA, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. Technology firms use CUDA to harness the full computational power of GPUs. If the GPUs are metaphorically a magical door, then CUDA represents the key that unlocks it. That's another significant advantage for NVIDIA. Most AI developers have become thoroughly accustomed to this software platform. If they want to work efficiently and quickly, they'll prefer using CUDA because of familiarity and extensive documentation. So here's the fundamental bottom line. These new alternative chips will definitely create significant disruption in the market. Some technology firms will absolutely purchase them to diversify away from NVIDIA dependence and reduce supplier risk. But the company's overall dominance isn't under existential threat. Not yet anyway. Like NVIDIA stated in their response, they remain a generation ahead technologically. Unless Google or another competitor makes a genuine quantum leap in performance, that fundamental dynamic won't change dramatically. But there's a bigger story here that extends far beyond just semiconductor competition. This connects to the broader fragility of the American economy and how dependent growth has become on just a handful of technology companies. Recent analysis examined what's being called the S&P 493, which represents the stock market index excluding the so-called Magnificent Seven technology companies. We've witnessed the stock market climbing consistently higher, breaking new records repeatedly throughout 2024 and into 2025. But if you strip out those seven companies, whose valuations are predicated almost entirely on AI promises and future growth expectations, the underlying stock market picture becomes drastically different. The growth story appears remarkably weak when you remove that concentration. It resembles a completely different economy operating beneath the surface. The data reveals that the S&P 493 showed 132% growth since 2019 when excluding the Magnificent Seven. But when you include them, that number jumps to 157% for 2025. This demonstrates just how powerful these seven companies have been in creating the illusion of broad-based economic growth. If 493 of the 500 companies in the index aren't actually performing at exponential levels, that alone demonstrates the potential drawback that could occur if those concentrated valuations begin declining. One analyst made a genuinely disturbing observation recently. We have placed so many economic bets on the AI boom succeeding that we literally cannot afford for it to slip or fail without triggering massive economic consequences. 
and this is where the Google versus NVIDIA competition becomes far more significant than just market share battles. It reveals the underlying fragility of how growth is currently structured. Consider OpenAI's position in this evolving landscape. Internal memos that leaked recently show Sam Altman warning employees about what he called rough vibes due to a resurgent Google. The memo projected potential revenue growth collapsing to just 5%, which would represent a catastrophic decline from expectations. Significantly, this assessment was written before Google's Gemini 3 even officially launched on November 18th. Altman praised Google's work while simultaneously declaring a shift to what he termed wartime footing inside OpenAI. Remember the context here. OpenAI is valued at approximately $500 billion, despite projecting cumulative losses that could reach $115 billion by 2029. Their entire valuation is built on assumptions of exponential growth and maintaining technological superiority in consumer-facing AI. Everything depends on that edge. What Google's breakthrough with Gemini 3 accomplishes is calling into serious question whether OpenAI can maintain that competitive advantage. It creates genuine uncertainty about future growth projections, which necessarily means they may not be able to fulfill trillion-dollar deal commitments, which would mean market valuations for many companies must decline significantly, with NVIDIA particularly exposed, since so much depends on OpenAI's continued chip purchases. Meanwhile, Google possesses enormous advantages that OpenAI simply cannot match. Google has over $100 billion in cash reserves, they have approximately 4 billion users globally across their various platforms. They control the Android operating system with massive global reach. They own YouTube, Gmail, Chrome, and the dominant search engine. They already possess more data about human behavior patterns than anyone else on Earth. All of that institutional knowledge and data existed before large language models even emerged. Then you combine all those advantages under Sundar Pichai, who apparently made Gemini development the single absolute priority inside Google recently. Technology reporters have documented how they completely revamped the product with the stated goal of making it the preeminent AI model in the market. This is what companies like Meta and Google have been communicating behind the scenes to investors. They essentially argue that while OpenAI produces impressive technology, they actually generate enormous sustainable profits. They possess monopolistic positions in social media, or search that can support the trillions of dollars being invested in AI development, without facing the same existential risks. OpenAI has become the cornerstone supporting stock growth expectations for numerous other sectors including data centers, NVIDIA, and related infrastructure industries. That's where significant concern emerges about potential collapse, or at minimum, a substantial slowdown. Such a development wouldn't necessarily crash the entire global economy immediately, but it would definitely force a major reassessment of growth expectations. And here's the critical point. Even a modest decrease in projected data center growth would mean GDP calculations themselves could push the economy into recession territory based on how economic statistics are currently structured. The concentration is that extreme. The dependence on continued AI investment growth is that absolute. One possibility worth examining, the expectation has been that AI development will ultimately be a winner-take-all competition. Whichever company achieves superintelligence first and reaches the critical pivot point where their AI is training subsequent AI systems and making significant decisions with humans merely overseeing, whoever achieves that breakthrough first will essentially capture the vast majority of economic value created. You could potentially have a situation where AI promises are actually fulfilled in terms of technological capability, but all these other companies making trillion-dollar bets still lose the competitive race. You'd still experience a massive market crash and valuation bubble collapse, even as one company achieves genuine superintelligence breakthrough. This recent development with Google serves as a reminder that the very structure of the AI race itself creates massive systemic economic risk. We're likely heading toward a monopolistic, winner-take-all situation. Whether it's Google, which possesses numerous structural advantages, or some other player, when they achieve the critical breakthrough, they're going to leapfrog far beyond all competitors and cause major cratering of valuations for competing companies that bet everything on winning this race. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.